Do you think your boiling point is low? Not anymore. It used to be. I think that comes with a normal growing up. In the hallowed corridors of showbiz history, there's one name that echoes with timeless charm and resonates through the ages. Frank Sinatra, a name synonymous with the golden era of music. Sinatra's legacy has long been etched in the hearts of millions. But what if I told you that behind the velvet curtain of this iconic crooner's life lies a revelation so profound, it's bound to stir the very essence of your emotions. Recently, the daughter of the legendary Frank Sinatra stepped into the limelight, not just to reminisce about her father's melodic masterpieces, but to unravel a well-kept secret that promises to transcend the realms of ordinary revelations. Brace yourselves for a journey into the unexplored facets of the Sinatra legacy, where the veil is lifted and the notes of a hidden melody are about to play on the strings of your heart. I never wanted for anything, but did, we did not have an abundance of anything. It was a semi-slum area. Uh, it was typical of the middle 20s and the late 20s and through the Depression. And it was pretty rough. In the heart of Hoboken, New Jersey, a legend was born on December 12, 1915. Francis Albert Sinatra, a name destined to be etched in the annals of musical history. But behind the enchanting melodies lies a captivating tale of adversity, resilience, and an unexpected journey that shaped the man behind the music. At 13.5 pounds, young Frank's entrance into the world was nothing short of dramatic. The use of forceps during his birth left lasting scars on his face, neck, and ear, a visual testament to the challenges he faced from the very beginning. Miraculously revived by his quick-thinking grandmother, Frank's early days were marked by a series of mishaps, including a baptism mix-up that led to his unique moniker. Despite these challenges, Sinatra's determination to overcome physical imperfections became evident in his adulthood. The scars, a defining feature, fueled his ambition to conceal them, illustrating his unyielding commitment to success. Amidst the obstacles, he transformed those scars into symbols of strength, paving the way for a remarkable journey ahead. Frank's childhood, as the only child of Italian immigrants, was marked by a profound sense of loneliness. His parents, Marty and Dolly, were influential figures in the community. Marty, a multifaceted individual, owned a local tavern and dabbled in part-time boxing. Dolly, a midwife with a controversial sideline, provided illegal abortion services. The demanding nature of their occupations and community involvement meant young Frank often navigated the challenges of childhood largely on his own. Despite the loneliness, Sinatra's parents' deep engagement in local politics and their impactful roles in the community hinted at the roots of his resilience and charisma. In a neighborhood where large families were the norm, Frank's status as an only child added a layer of uniqueness to his upbringing. But let me tell you something intriguing. Amid the solitude, he cultivated a sense of independence that later became a driving force behind his success. You've probably seen him in movies, but behind the silver screen charisma was a man molded by the trials of his youth. It must have been a big challenge for him. Yet there's an even more interesting story behind him. In a revealing interview later in life, Sinatra expressed a yearning for siblings, shedding light on the emotional complexities of his early years. I used to wish I had an older brother who could help me when I needed him. I wished I had a younger sister I could protect, he confessed, unveiling the longing for companionship that lingered in the background of his illustrious journey. Frank Sinatra's journey into the heart of music began in the youthful glow of his Hoboken neighborhood where the vibrant sounds of big band jazz captured his imagination. Icons like Gene Austin, Rudy Vallee, Russ Colombo, and Bob Eberly played through his life, with Bing Crosby standing as a beacon of inspiration. This passion was nurtured early on when his uncle Domenico gifted him a ukulele for his 15th birthday, marking the beginning of Sinatra's lifelong affair with music. His educational stint at David E. Rue Jr. High School and subsequently at A.J. Demarest High School Later, Hoboken High School was short-lived and marked by his penchant for arranging bands for school dances, showcasing his emerging talent. However, Sinatra's academic journey ended abruptly as he left without graduating, expelled for general rowdiness after attending only 47 days. Post-expulsion, Sinatra's path took a pragmatic turn when he enrolled at Drake Business School to satisfy his mother's wishes. Though his stay was brief, he embarked on various jobs, including a stint as a delivery boy at the Jersey Observer, where his godfather worked, and later, 
as a riveter. These experiences, however, were merely detours on his road to musical success. His mother, Dolly Sinatra, played a crucial role in this journey. Despite the initial reluctance from Sinatra's father, Marty, who dismissed his son's seeing aspirations as mere hobbyism and envisioned a conventional career path for him, Dolly saw the spark in her son. Her support went beyond encouragement. She provided Sinatra with the resources he needed, such as sound equipment and sheet music, and utilized her political connections to secure singing opportunities. And let me tell you, her efforts paid off big time when she helped Sinatra land a spot with the Hoboken Four, marking a significant milestone in his path to stardom. Sinatra's determination to improve his craft led him to take elocution lessons from vocal coach John Quinlan, one of the first to recognize his vocal range. He also performed in local Hoboken social clubs and on radio stations like Watt in Jersey City, slowly building a name for himself. In New York, Sinatra sang for his supper or cigarettes, a testament to his humble beginnings and unwavering dedication. This narrative not only chronicles Sinatra's rise to fame, but also highlights the complex interplay of family dynamics, personal ambition, and the undying support of a mother who believed in her son's dreams. Frank Sinatra's ascent into the pantheon of music legends was deeply influenced by his profound admiration for Bing Crosby, the iconic crooner of his time. In his formative years, Sinatra's bedroom was adorned with a picture of Crosby, whose warm, passionate, and laid-back singing style laid the groundwork for Sinatra's early vocal development. This admiration was not just a phase, but a foundational element that shaped Sinatra into a distinctive and influential musical force. The first encounter between Sinatra and his idol occurred in 1935 at a newer club, marking the beginning of a complex relationship that would evolve over the decades. While their paths momentarily diverged, they would reunite in the 1940s, by which time Sinatra had risen to stardom, his fame even eclipsing that of Crosby's. The fervor surrounding Sinatra, particularly among teenage Bobby Soxer girls, was unparalleled, setting him apart from Crosby, who, despite his popularity, did not command the same frenetic fan adoration. The media played a significant role in fueling a rivalry between Sinatra and Crosby, often highlighting exchanges that were laden with humorous barbs and insults. But you know what's interesting. This rivalry was more a spectacle for public consumption than a genuine feud. Over time, their relationship transitioned from competitive banter to mutual respect and collaboration, with both legends performing duets and sharing the silver screen in movies like High Society. Sinatra's journey was also marked by moments of vulnerability, particularly as new talents emerged on the music scene. The rise of singer Eddie Fisher in the early 1950s, for example, sparked fears within Sinatra of a waning career. This period of introspection and concern for his future in music led Sinatra to reinvent himself by transitioning into swing music, a strategic pivot that rejuvenated his career and solidified his status as a music icon. Through his relationship with Bing Crosby and the challenges he faced from emerging talents, Sinatra's story is one of resilience, evolution, and the enduring pursuit of musical excellence. In the grand symphony of his life, his journey from being an ardent admirer of Crosby to establishing himself as a towering figure in music history exemplifies the transformative power of passion, perseverance, and the ability to adapt and thrive in the ever-changing landscape of popular music. Frank Sinatra's early foray into Hollywood during the 1940s marked the beginning of an illustrious film career, intertwined with his self-assured but critical view of his acting talents. Despite his own skepticism, remarking once that pictures stink, Sinatra's journey from a cameo appearance in Las Vegas Nights, 1941, to leading roles showcased his evolving confidence and versatility as an actor. Sinatra's significant break came with Anchors Away, 1945, a technicolor musical opposite Gene Kelly, highlighting his ability to captivate audiences beyond his established musical fame. The film's success, underscored by several Academy Award wins and nominations, set the stage for Sinatra's rising star in Hollywood. But you know what's interesting? His collaborations with Gene Kelly continued to reinforce his popularity, with both Take Me Out to the Ball Game and On the Town, both 1949, earning critical acclaim. However, it was from here to eternity, 1953, that transformed Sinatra's acting career, earning him an Academy Award for Best Supporting Actor. His portrayal of Maggio marked a turning point reinvigorating his career and establishing him as a serious actor. 
Sinatra continued to diversify his roles, earning acclaim for performances in Young at Heart, 1954, and a BAFTA nomination for The Man with the Golden Arm, 1955, where he played a heroin addict. Despite a tumultuous relationship with filmmaker Stanley Kramer, Sinatra's acting career flourished throughout the 1950s. In the realm of mid-20th century American music and culture, Frank Sinatra emerged not only as a supreme talent but also as a figure surrounded by controversy and rivalry. One such fascinating aspect involves Jimmy Roselli, often referred to as the other Sinatra. Born a decade after Frank, Roselli shared a similar heritage and upbringing in the Italian-American enclave of Hoboken, New Jersey. Despite Sinatra's towering fame, Roselli carved out his own niche, especially within the Italian-American community, earning admiration for a vocal range that some argued surpassed Sinatra's. The rivalry took a personal turn when Sinatra's mother, Dolly, invited Roselli to perform at a benefit event. Can you believe it? Guess what happened next? Roselli, adamant about getting paid for his performance, stirred the pot, leading to what some call a vendetta by Sinatra. It's like a real-life drama, showcasing the cutthroat nature of the entertainment industry and the personal twists that can influence an artist's journey. Adding to the complexity of Sinatra's legacy are his alleged connections to the Mafia. Despite Sinatra's denials of any wrongdoing, his FBI file paints a picture of a man who mingled with notorious mob figures, from Chicago mob boss Sam Giancana to Detroit's Jackalone brothers. These associations extended beyond casual socializing, with Sinatra performing at events for his Mafia friends and allegedly leveraging these connections for personal and professional gain. Rumors swirled that Sinatra could mobilize these ties to resolve disputes or extricate himself from unfavorable contracts, sometimes with implied threats of violence. Despite the cloud of suspicion and the extensive surveillance by the FBI, Sinatra was never charged with any crime related to his supposed Mafia connections. Frank Sinatra's journey into the world of politics, especially his alliance with the Democratic Party and his backing of John F. Kennedy, is a captivating tale of glamour, influence, and eventual estrangement, and you won't believe how this story unfolds. It all began the mysterious corridors of power, where Sinatra's connection with the Kennedys unfolded through his friend and Rat Pack member, Peter Lawford, who happened to be married to Kennedy's sister, Pat. Can you picture the intrigue? The details of their initial encounter are shrouded in secrecy, but said that Kennedy was drawn to Sinatra's charismatic glamour. While Sinatra admired Kennedy's political power and charm, as Kennedy announced his bid for the presidency, Sinatra, with his trademark enthusiasm, became a staunch supporter. He not only endorsed Kennedy, but also utilized his star power to organize donor dinners, feature in political radio ads, and even offered Kennedy the luxury of his private jet. Sinatra's song, High Hopes, became the unofficial anthem of Kennedy's campaign, adding a melodious touch to the political fervor. Yet, lurking behind the scenes were speculations about Joseph Kennedy, JFK's father, aiming to leverage Sinatra's connections to the mob and labor unions to secure crucial votes. However, this seemingly harmonious friendship hit a sour note post-election. The turning point came when FBI Chief J. Edgar Hoover shared revelations with Robert Kennedy, exposing White House recordings of phone calls that linked JFK to Chicago mob boss Sam Giancana. Another wiretap brought to light Sinatra's affair with JFK's married sister, Pat. Now hold your breath for this revelation. The recordings unveiled Sinatra's cunning strategy of exploiting his relationship with Pat to influence her brothers and divert attention from his mob associates. In the aftermath of these scandalous revelations, the Kennedys, including Attorney General Robert Kennedy, deemed Sinatra a liability. The fallout marked the end of Sinatra's once close friendship with the political family he had passionately endorsed. Frank Sinatra's journey through marriage was marked by passion, heartbreak, and a series of significant chapters with different women. In 1939, Sinatra tied the knot with his childhood sweetheart, Nancy Barbato. The couple shared the joys of parenthood, welcoming three children, Nancy, Frank Sinatra Jr., and Tina. However, as time unfolded, their marital harmony unraveled, leading to the demise of their union in the late 1940s. The allure of Hollywood romance beckoned Sinatra, leading him to actress Ava Gardner in 1951. Their marriage added a glamorous touch to Sinatra's life. But like any cinematic plot, their love story faced its share of twists and turns. You won't believe what happened next. After their separation, Sinatra embarked on a third marriage, 
this time with Maya Farrow in 1966. Despite the initial allure, this union also found its end in divorce in 1968. Sinatra's pursuit of lasting love didn't wane, and in 1976, he exchanged vows for the fourth and final time with Barbara Blakely Marks, the ex-wife of comedian Zeppo Marks. Their union stood the test of time, enduring for more than two decades until Sinatra's passing. The complexity of Sinatra's romantic life took an intriguing turn in October 2013 when Maya Farrow, in an interview with Vanity Fair, suggested that Sinatra could be the father of her son Ronan. Ronan, her only official biological child with director Woody Allen, sparked a humorous response amid the media frenzy. In a tweet, he playfully remarked, Listen, we're all possibly Frank Sinatra's son. In the archives of show business lore, tales of Frank Sinatra's explosive anger and erratic behavior have become iconic. But guess what really sets the stage for drama? One memorable incident, as recounted by GQ, unfolded during a show in Hong Kong. A mistimed light cue served as the catalyst for Sinatra's fury, leading him to not only demolish his dressing room, but also wreak havoc in his hotel suite, causing significant damage to priceless antiques in the process. Another notable outburst occurred when, in a drunken rage, he recklessly drove a golf cart through a shopping mall window. J. Randy Taraparelli's biography, Sinatra, Behind the Legend, offers further insights into the singer's tempestuous nature. Here's where things get intense. In one episode, Sinatra reportedly hurled a plate of pasta against the wall of an Italian restaurant in a fit of rage over the perceived sogginess of the dish. Reviews of James Kaplan's biography shed light on Sinatra's tendency to bully venue staff and lesser-known entertainers. And you know what adds to the tension? He was known to exploit his connections to the mob to intimidate or even physically harm individuals he disliked. Sinatra's disdain for stand-up comedians, in particular, was notable possibly fueled by personal insecurities and a fear of public humiliation. Now, brace yourself for this twist. When comedian Shiki Green made a remark that angered Sinatra, he found himself facing aggression from a group of Sinatra's associates. Comedian Jackie Mason, who joked about Sinatra's marriage to the much younger Maya Farrow, received anonymous death threats. But here's where it gets even more intense. Persisting with Frank Sinatra jokes, Mason endured shots fired into his hotel room and physical assaults, resulting in injuries to his nose and cheekbones. He would throw himself into romance, maybe no more than the next guy. I don't know, maybe because he had more of a fluidity and, a, and he moved in the world more. He had more, um, he had a lot available to him, you know, I mean, that's for sure. Despite his public image as a charismatic entertainer and ladies' man, Frank Sinatra grappled with a profound yearning for love and companionship. According to Tara Borelli, Sinatra found it challenging to maintain healthy romantic relationships, often searching for the next best thing. His emotional highs and lows, coupled with personal insecurities, presented a stark contrast to his external success. But you know what's really intriguing? Behind the glitz and glamour, Sinatra was just a man searching for something real. Frank Sinatra Jr., following in his famous father's footsteps, embarked on a singing career at a young age. However, tragedy struck on December 8, 1963, when Sinatra Jr. was abducted from his dressing room at Harris Club Lodge in Lake Tahoe. Two men posing as delivery personnel kidnapped him, demanding a ransom of $240,000. Sinatra Sr. collaborated with the FBI, ultimately paying the ransom to secure his son's safe return. Now. Here's where the plot thickens. The kidnappers were apprehended, but during the trial, they attempted to portray Sinatra Jr. as the mastermind behind his abduction, a claim refuted by FBI evidence. Justice prevailed as the kidnappers were convicted, bringing closure to a terrifying chapter in the Sinatra family's history. Frank Sinatra's passing on May 14, 1998 marked the end of an era. He died of a heart attack at the Cedar sinai Medical Center in Los Angeles, surrounded by his wife, Barbara Marks, and their three children. Sinatra faced significant health challenges in his later years, including heart and respiratory issues, bladder cancer, and Alzheimer's disease. In a symbolic gesture reflecting Sinatra's life, he was buried with items of personal significance, including a pack of Camel cigarettes, a bottle of Jack Daniels whiskey, a Zippo lighter, and a dollar's worth of dimes, representing his favorite brands and vices.
Despite his explosive temper and turbulent relationships behind the glitz and glamour, Sinatra was just a man searching for something real. And as his daughter reflects on his life, she unveils a narrative that goes beyond the iconic entertainer, portraying Sinatra as a complex individual yearning for love and grappling with personal struggles throughout his journey. Share your thoughts in the comments and ensure you subscribe for more captivating video updates.